Steve Smith Sr. is here to teach us a little ball, just like he's been doing over on his own channel, Cut To It. What we'll be doing in this series, going over the X's and O's of some fantasy relevant players, see if they can, I don't know, have the skills to catch 1,031 passes like this guy did. Well, I pull up the Chiefs wide receiver tape, but we got to start here, though. Travis Kelsey gets injured 24 hours before game time. That's probably way too quick to change the game plan, change the call sheet. What's going on in the minds of Andy Reid and these uh, these receivers are basically be hopping into a new role now they've only had 24 hours to prepare for it? I, I think it's really tough when you have situational players uh, coming in with, uh, you know, averaging, what, 15, 12, uh, only really 15 or 12 plays per game coming in really when they're only required – uh, to catch the football. And then all of a sudden now you have to run routes that aren't necessarily where you're targeted. It's just really the flow of the game. Mm -hmm. And it, it becomes difficult. I, I really didn't believe that the Travis Kelsey absence would have that big enough impact because you have the ace in the hole with uh, Patrick Mahomes. And yeah. now Patrick Mahomes goes out there, still gave him a chance to win, put the ball in places really that only a good quarterback will put the ball in, which is where the receiver can catch the ball. And it, it didn't turn out well, but it isn't because these guys can't play or Andy Reid or Matt Nagy isn't this. It just really has to do with understanding the timing, understanding the structure of the play, the route, the structure of the offense. Andy Reid is a traditional, one of the last dying breeds of a traditional timing, old school West Coast offense. There's so many guys that are really running the same offense over and over again. And so there's the defense kind of has a beat on what's going on. And that's why Andy Reid, for so long has always stayed on top of his game, no matter where he's been in Philly or with the Chiefs. And that's why things are always uh, worked out for Andy. And then what makes it go more than anything is his quarterback. He's had yep. um, Donovan McNabb, Michael Vick. But what he's never had is a Patrick Mahomes. And that's why Patrick Mahomes and these Kansas City Chiefs are two-time world champs right now. Yeah, this is the first thing I wanted to pull up when we're talking about Sky more off the bat here is just understanding the timing and getting on the same page as Mahomes. And that was basically the big key of why the Chiefs ended up losing this game, in my opinion. So we have Sky more at the top of the screen here. And this is a pretty clean look, in my opinion. But you can tell that Patrick Mahomes and Sky Moore are just not on the same page. Now, Steve, I'm giving you permission. If we want to blame this on the quarterback, we can blame this on the quarterback. This is a wide receiver show. But do you think that this play right here was Sky Moore supposed to be sitting down, or do you think that Patrick Mahomes just kind of threw this ball behind him? Well, first of all, you got to understand the whole offense. And most offensive coordinators are going to say you got to get your full depth. Some will say you have to go down, uh, go take another revolution. But in this traditional offense, it's a six-yard slant. Here's the other part. You have the RPO game going on as well. So if you shorten up the steps, it's supposed to be, you're supposed to go six and you go four and a half or five. Well, now you have the RPO game where you're holding it and you still have to throw it. So when you cut it short, it speeds up the process of the quarterback. Yes, Patrick Mahomes needs to put the ball in front. But the reason why the ball is behind him is because Sky Moore speeds up the play. But you also understand Sky Moore speeds up the play because at this moment in the game, Sky Moore has been running routes and he hasn't been getting the ball. Mm -hmm. And so now in your mind as a receiver, you start to figure, you start to say, what am I doing wrong? What did I do wrong? And let me make it right. And what do you do? Athleticism makes it right. Not yeah. saying it, 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 I'm not saying that it's Patrick Mahomes or Sky Moore. I'm just saying, understanding the whole play and where we are in the game really sometimes plays into a wide receiver quarterback, offense coordinator, all the minds of all of uh, the people in play where sometimes that's where the, the disconnect can, can form and happen. Yeah. You, you saw this in the entire game and what I think what happened with Sky Moore and Kadarius, Tony, uh, and like this play right here is, is they started getting in their head. Now, like I think that Sky Moore sits down the right spot here, but I was just yes. curious he if said, at the right at the right depth, sitting down, 
But also, too, when you're a guy, Sky Moore, first touchdown was in a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. His first career touchdown was in the Super Bowl, and now all of a sudden you're playing Thursday night. Everybody's watching, and now you you get a little antsy and you lose the feel because you haven't played enough times because the most you play is in the preseason. Mm-hmm. The most you play is in the one underwear Olympics in practice. Let's be honest. The Detroit Lions defense is a lot better. Their secondary players, I think, I believe, are a lot better than in totality of the Kansas City Chiefs and their secondary. Their guys are more handsy, uh, run a lot of zone with spags. These guys are running zone, man. And so he opens up the right play, throws it. But it's also a great play by yes, a good DB who, who attacks the ball, not the player. Yeah, and I think that was another big change up here as we're going to run through a couple of these Sky Moore plays where they just were trying to get something going, and they do use Sky Moore in these kind of ways. You're going to get some sweep action. But a lot of the things I was looking at with Sky Moore is so much of it is these underneath routes. They're throwing a lot of whip routes for him. There was a lot of mesh yeah. in this game, and it was really interesting because the Lions last year, uh, they had a lot of other defensive uh, players in the secondary but they ran a lot of man coverage. And then this game, it was a lot of zone coverage. And I was wondering if that was going to be catching the chiefs off guard. If that caught any of these kind of inexperienced wide receivers off guard in particular here. It did even go backward on this one where he throws it. Look, you you know, some people call it a whip route. Some people call it China route, but you got in motion. So that gives you an indicator of is it man or zone. Look, Scott Moore is open, Yep, but also, Patrick Mahomes, he's one of those quarterbacks, what you like to call greedy. He's going to go for the yardage. He's going to keep his offense ahead of the change, or ahead of schedule. Because ahead of schedule means that you get to open up that playbook mm-hmm. a lot more. And so when he he's open, Patrick Mahomes says, hey, I'm not going to check take the short. I'm going to take the first down. And it works out well. At times, though, it's going to go against you because you have a young, inexperienced, lack of timing experience in games with Patrick Mahomes because of Travis Kelsey not being there as well. Yeah, I think this play kind of shows that exact thing, being on the same page. And this is like a third and six right here. And at the top of the screen, you third and six. Mm -hmm. You have I'm not I think that's MVS. Yep. In the slot, the number three. Then you have two guys running what they call a double China or double out. Mm -hmm. So you really put the pressure on the corners. They have to establish who they are, where they are right now. But look at Patrick Mahomes with penetration coming. He's already out of there. He's already ready to throw the ball. But look at his receivers. His receivers' heads aren't even turned looking. They're still running the China route. But the DBs are looking at at the quarterback. So Patrick Mahomes feels the pressure. First of all, Hutchinson puts this tackle in a blender, mm-hmm. spin moves, then spin moves again. again. And now Patrick Mahomes has to figure it out and, and, and make something happen with his legs. Yeah, I was going to ask you about this one because I noticed this a lot. Uh, on these third downs, a lot of the Sky Moore routes weren't beyond the sticks. Is there something to like yes. read be- be- between that? Like, Is there a – a certain thing that Sky Moore is not showing them in practice. Like, why are that all these routes designed so so much short of the sticks? And then the other thing is, Mahomes to me it didn't seem like he gave these wide receivers a chance. Like he got out of there pretty quick. It, it, it has to do with the a- Aiden Hutchinson right uh, pressure, and then also you got to look at the game is telling you how are they mm-hmm. going, right? You're asking your quarterback to stay in the pocket to be patient, and the question is for what? What is he being patient for? Is he being patient for it because his young receivers are getting open? Is he being patient because he knows that something magical is going to happen? Usually that's what we expect. And so you allow the game to, the, the game tells the story of what's going on. And Sky Moore running China routes or running shorter routes isn't necessarily that they lost faith or they don't believe in him. It has to do with this is the offense. And this is where they are. And this is the plays they've dialed up that they believe are the plays that help them get where they need to go. Yep. And this is we're going to go over to Kadarius Tony next here. And who who, I I felt bad for Kadarius because uh, obviously, you know, trolls are going to come out in in, in droves. But he he was struggling. And and I've been I've been or have seen guys 
who have struggled in the game. It's not you don't wake up and go, hey, I want to drop passes today. <laughs> right, I want right, to make right. my job so difficult that I become mentally I'm on a mental roller coaster unbuckled mm -hmm. that I don't want to be on. And you can see that Kadarius Tony was just trying to stay afloat, man. He was just trying to get a pass that he can catch. And so there were times where it just didn't work out, man. Yeah. And on this pick right here, this is his lack of concentration, assuming that I got it. And all of a sudden you realize, I should have caught that. And then all of a sudden, you, what you hope doesn't happen, happens. Yeah, and the other context here is Kadarius Tony's coming off of a knee injury, and they weren't sure he was going to be able to play too. So I think I noticed it on a couple of these routes where Kadarius didn't look like totally himself. He took the, his eye off uh, the ball here a little bit. But I, I think that these guys know that you can't be dropping the passes. What I found interesting about this play, and it kind of goes back to what we were talking about with Sky Moore, is three by one set, and it's another like third and six, third and seven. And I believe this is some type of cover seven here where Kadarius Tony at the top of the screen, he's just getting man coverage. I was curious what your thoughts on like his release and then also kind of the, the play design on Kadarius against man coverage, another route short of the sticks here. Like, is this just them thinking that Kadarius Tony is going to win running across the field? Or do you think that there's something else going on in his game where he can't <clears throat> win a route on his side of the field? It's more, it, it's man coverage. Right. With a little bit of two shell underneath. So it's two man. Right. So you have everything deep. And also the the Detroit Lions are telling us right now, we don't fear anybody vertically. Right. That can challenge us. And the way you're running this right way, you're running the plays. They don't believe it either. Now, also too, go back. Look at the left tackle up at the top. Who is who? All of a sudden, what makes a fantastic quarterback, what makes Patrick Mahomes really good is his pocket awareness and understanding and feeling the rush. And so you have MVS in the slot. He's going across. The linebacker goes. And Kadarius really is supposed to be a mesh, what we call two ships crossing in the night. Yep. But they don't cross to where you get the rub or the natural openness. He's open right. So if you go back, he's open right now. But when he throws it, it's over there. And so it's a little bit of, I got this by Kadarius, which we all do, mm -hmm. right? Oops, I dropped it. It bounced off my hand. It came with a little bit more zest than I expected. Lack of concentration. Also, the way the game was going, that's just kind of how it started. And it just kept going from there. And you can't get out, you can't get out of your own way. All right, let's get through a little mesh clinic here because this is another play where, like the last play, I think that there was just some mistakes with the timing, and that's a very key part to this Andy Reid offense here. We're going to have yeah. Kadarius up at the top, and then Richie James, who's another part-time player, kind of similar to Kadarius Tony, running this mesh route over the middle. Now, am I wrong in thinking that Richie James here is kind of all over the place and like kind of getting in the head of Kadarius Tony running this route? What, what's Who's going on top? Who's supposed to go underneath? And then going back to the, this is also – against zone well, coverage. This should win against zone or man, correct? Well, the problem is that Richie James, one, gets too high. Yeah. And so now you see, see that, see that, see that left arm? Yep. That left arm, he's trying to, he's, he's turning the Cadillac. He's trying to get back underneath because he realizes I'm the low man. Mm. And so by doing that, he gets in the way and it throws Kadarius off. And Patrick doesn't know that because Patrick is seeing the progression of saying, my guy should be open. And yeah. so that's one on Richie James. That's why Richie James shows flashes. Well, Richie James lacks a little bit of expertise, of field awareness, and understanding what his job is at that moment. And it just throws Kadarius off, and it's not and it's not Kadarius' fault. But when the when the football hits the wide receiver's hands, it's always our fault. Right, and I think this was an unfair criticism of Kadarius on this play. Like yes. as you said, Mahomes he's looking at Kadarius. Kadarius is open. Mahomes is thinking, where is Richie James? He's probably should have been already past him. He's supposed to be going underneath, like you said he's, there. He's not thinking Richie James will be in the way like he was. And then you see Kadarius looking. He doesn't look at Mahomes. He doesn't look at himself. He's looking. He looks at, at Kader, He he looks at Richie like, bro, come on. 
you good friend of mine. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? Yes, so on that mesh route, is it always the person that's being targeted supposed to go it, over the it top? Just or a, it, depends? It, it just depends. Okay. It just depends. Okay. And they may have a rule on who goes up top, who goes down low, but you know it varies each week. Okay, fair enough. Okay, so now we got another play, and this is kind of going into how are you going to win against zone coverage? And maybe they weren't prepared for this. And you have Kadarius Tony running at looks like fa- some some type of Tampa two, and he was wide and, open. Yep. Yes, but he starts to. So here's the problem: he get one, he gets off the leverage. He sits down. He should be sitting down right at the tip of the spear of KC. Okay. Instead, he he veers and floats, does not sit down, anchor himself down. He kind of starts to kind of settles back in. Look, right Run, there. Right there, sit. Sit or wherever he sits. But here's where I knew something was wrong. Kadarius. The way he tries to catch the ball, man, he's just trying to get through this game. Mm -hmm. And because he doesn't sit down and kind of floats, he floats right into the defender. And the defender makes a great play. Yeah, it's a great play. He should be sitting right over there in the middle. Yep. Yep. And that's just Mahomes just trying to get on the same page with his guys once again. Now, this play was just a simple drop. um, And we don't need to criticize Kadarius Stone. He knows that he needs to catch this ball. I, I did find it interesting, though. Just when you're this wide open in the game, you can see his head turn away. So he's got looking at the quarterback here, and then he looks away real quick to see if he's going to get hit over in coverage. Is that like something that you are encouraging wide receivers to do, get a feel for it? Does he do it too late in the route here? Because uh, I do think it probably led to him dropping this pass. But when you're this wide open, is, is there any reason that you're going to be looking back uh, in the secondary? Well, he's trying to see, does the corner – Float and what I feel is it true? Mm-hmm. And then he takes his eye off of it because easy money. Right. And so that's one of the toughest catches is when you're wide open because your mind starts to go and sometimes you just you forget something. The football. So and and he knows that. So we don't need to belabor that point here. Here was a a, a little play. And this is going back to to Nagy's play calling, and we saw this a ton. Third and short, the Chiefs were just not running the ball. So I don't know if it's they don't want to do under center stuff with Patrick Mahomes and QB Sneak coming off of that dislocated knee from a couple years ago. I'm not sure if they didn't trust their offensive line against this defensive line. I'm not sure if it was the running back's fault. But either way, they kept doing a lot of this design stuff to Kadarius Tony and Sky Moore in particular. You see Kadarius on the bottom here. I believe it's like a third and two. He doesn't win his route, and then of course Jarek McKinnon passes or drops the pass here again. Uh, what's your thoughts on like the overall design? Do you love this route? Who was Mahomes? You think trying to go to here? Well, they just run a play, and his the Mahomes is going to whatever the defense is dictating mm-hmm. for him to go. You can look; nobody's winning. Right. These these Detroit Lions guys are covering pretty good. You know, these guys get paid as well, yes, and they this do. is just part of the game where. At some point, your quarterback has to go through his progressions and your receivers have to stay alive. And that's what happens. He gives them – McKinnon usually catches this pass. It's just one of those it, – it, it's one of those where it summarizes the type of game that the Kansas City Chiefs were having without a Travis Kelsey. Yeah, I just really it was uh, snowballing here again. And this is – this was an, another interesting route because I thought that Kadarius Tony had a little bit of separation here. Mahomes is looking directly at him, but there's a lack of trust. There's something that's not correct right here and ends up going to uh, Rasheed Rice, who ends up dropping this pass. And then here's just more trickeration at the goal line. Now, I don't want to criticize the Chiefs for doing this stuff because they have been absolutely legendary doing this stuff, but really nothing was working. It wasn't just Kadarius Tony and Sky Moore dropping passes. It was all this trickeration stuff. None of it was working. They were basically a yard short, but I really do think it's just simply uh, the momentum going away from them, the game plan yep. being changed uh, from uh, the Detroit Lions right before, and then obviously you're losing Kadarius Tony. Now, I don't want to end this thing on a sour note here because this is the Kansas City Chiefs, and I I'm not don't want to speak for you, but I've got a good feeling you think that the, the Chiefs are going to be able to bounce back here the rest of the season. So I wanted to go over a couple other players who have not been getting – that much playing time yet 
But I do wonder if they are going to step into more full-time roles here. And one of them is second rounder Rasheed Rice. Now we're here at the goal line again here. And Rasheed Rice is over there in the slot, the number two spot. Now, is he supposed to be running the back line and then just improvises? And well, then he so, just that- wide open. Yep. He just becomes wide open. Rasheed Rice, uh, going back, and I looked at his, his film, and I got to uh, make sure I get my note. But Rasheed, Rasheed Rice did a fantastic job uh, as, at SMU, right? I talked to some people down there and said, Andy Reese runs a tough training camp, uh, OTAs. And so Rasheed came in un, really unprepared for what uh, Andy Reed Andy runs those guys. Mm-hmm. And he came in and man, you know, it's all obviously it's all out there for for the news that, you know, he was puking. He was not prepared for it. And man, he really hunkered down and used June and July and came into camp outstanding. But one of the things that did not do uh, Rice a service is he played at SMU and his quarterback play was inconsistent. Okay. And you can see on a game, you can see in his tape in college, man, he has big playability. But he's never obviously played with a guy like Patrick Mahomes. He's never been in an offense like this. So it's going to take some time for him to develop, for them to develop, and know really what are the things that he does well, what are the things we probably need to work on in the offseason that we need to minimize exposing during the season. And so that's going to take some time. Kadarius, Rasheed Rice, uh, Sky Moore, all these guys are are going to be fine overall. Like Delta, the whole Gamut, they'll mm-hmm. be fine. But leading up to it, it's going to be some growing pains. There are going to be some things that you're not really sure, and you're going to get frustrated with. So I would say these are guys that you stash. These are guys that you hold on to that when uh, this sloppy September kind of gets over with, and then you have a little bit of get right October, November to December is where you're going to see these guys really all on the same page. Hopefully, uh, Travis Kelsey is there, and then you have – um, uh, d- the running back Pacheco, who you know he has some injuries, so he wasn't able to start. He didn't play as much, and then you got down so bad, and you lacked big play ability that you know it really made you kind of worry and concern. Mm-hmm. But that's what you do: is you over, uh, you overthinking, you worry about it because you expected that the Detroit Lions would lose to the Kansas City Chiefs, but the roles were reversed. Yeah, I completely agree. I, I do wonder if the the veterans like Justin Watson, who I have here on the bottom of the screen, he's somebody that obviously knows Patrick Mahomes. He probably has a lot of trust in him, and he's also got a little bit more size than the rest of this wide receiver group. And he also runs all these downfield routes, like this type of route right here. Like you just don't see this from Sky Moore and Kadarius Tony too often, and they needed a splash play. Uh, Justin Watson g- gets down here and draws a defensive pass interference. But I do wonder if somebody like Justin Watson is going to run a little bit more routes. It seemed like they were kind of running a little bit of a tryout, uh, if you will, uh, in this week one game to see uh, where Rice is, where Sky Moore and Kadarius Tony is. But I do think that uh, Justin Watson and MVS uh, are two of the, the downfield big body guys. And I do wonder if you are looking for explosives, if these two type of guys are going to get a little bit more playing time. Absolutely. Those guys get more playing time, but you're also going to have a lot of guys that rotate in and out because it's going to be wide receiver by committee. Yep. But also understand, too, is look at Juju Smith-Schuster, what he was looking at before the the big hit last year, what he was showing. And then look at Juju, how he looked with the New England Patriots this past mm-hmm. weekend and understanding, you know, not every offense is created equally. And just because you have success with one quarterback and one offense doesn't always mean that you're going to have that same success, especially when you lack the running game uh, that the New England Patriots lack because of the rain. You, you lack some of the receivers that you don't have in Kansas City that you also are, don't have in uh, with the New England Patriots. And then we've seen this from Juju is – when he when A B left and departed, where all of a sudden you thought that you had a surefire wide receiver one, well, really, Juju Smith Schuster, I believe, is a wide receiver three, right? He's a guy who can play wide receiver two. He can play Robin, but you got to have multiple Batman, mm-hmm. and you can't depend on Robin to really show up every single day. He'll sneak in in that role, but if you give him that honorary badge and expect that out of him. 
every single day, you're going to fall short and you're going to be disappointed. Yeah, definitely some speed uh, alongside Juju is what was missing. Uh, and I, I hope that they're, they're going to get that with, with MVS and Justin Watson. I do think that eventually Kadarius Tony hopefully can get more up to speed. I want to end it on this play, though, because this is why Patrick Mahomes is Patrick Mahomes here. Uh, we have what I believe is cover to invert, which means the corners typically on the bottom and the very top are actually going to go run over to the safety. And there's going to be a whole spot right down the middle. And my question for you here is if you're MVS, what is it like running down the middle of the field like this when you know that there's a couple dudes back there that are ready to absolutely light you up? What, what is it like being in the, in the NFL running this type of route when the ball is coming, you're looking at tracking it and you know, you're going to be getting hit like this. Well, the well, one is the, the way Patrick Mahomes places the football Perfect. shows that he will protect you on the throw. So many times we've seen, that may be other players, hey, Tua threw a few pa passes against the Los Angeles Chargers that got, I think, the tight end Smythe or Smith. Mm -hmm. Got him. He threw it in double, uh, triple coverage, and he's lucky my man, didn't, my man was stayed healthy. But this is a great pass. Puts the ball right where it needs to be, low, and telling MVS, hey, you got to get low because the hit is coming. He utilizes his body and makes a great catch. Yeah, really. And this is just like Patrick Mahomes' arm strength, that this isn't lofted in the air. I mean, that's basically a line drive throw there. So, yeah, so I think I – think Not a lot of people can make that throw. No, that's just – that's silly stuff there. And credit to MVS standing there take a big hit like that so yeah i think ultimately the chiefs are going to figure this out i think sky Moore and Kadarius tony are going to be the players that they're going to depend on the most if those guys aren't stepping up to the plate at least mvs and justin watson are there to know the system and really this this offense goes because travis kelsey goes all those option routes and stuff they clearly missed that the timing will get better like you said this is a timing based offense so getting these guys just reps over the course of the season i think that the chiefs will figure this thing out anything else we missed about the chiefs offense here no, I mean, you hit it on the head, right? Yeah. Let's do it. All right. If you I are looking for more Steve Smith, and we all are, go over to Cut To It. Uh, what What were we doing this week for Cut To It after week one? Uh, just look, we talked about these guys with the uh, with the Chargers. I mean, uh, with the Chiefs, but just really just overall wide receiver one, guys you should start, sit, stash. But then also offenses, uh, the Carolina Panthers, the New England Patriots, stories, just what we saw. Uh, and so looking forward to it, man. And hey, we can also do a breakdown, hopefully give an opportunity. If Desmond Ritter gives Drake London an opportunity, he can have we can have him on the show to highlight some of his good catches and a big body uh, that he was notoriously known for. That's why he was drafted in the first round. Yeah, I'm a huge Drake London fan. I would love to do a video on him. He's going to need more than one target to do a full 30 minute breakdown, though. So maybe eventually we'll get that for 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 Drake London, Desmond Ritter. But um, that'll do it. Leave a subscription down below. Play on Underdog Fantasy. We got Pick'em. We have DFS contest. Josh and I will be back on the channel to do more fantasy football content later. Make sure to go check out Steve's stuff on Cut To It with Coley. Great stuff over there as well. But for now, uh, thanks for teaching us some ball here, and we'll get out of here later. I oh, appreciate it. Thank you.